Amen. I hope that you can join in and say amen right where you're at, not only with the singing, but also with the preaching. If there's something that is shared that you want to say amen to, I know it's different. Um, You can say it right there in your home. We won't hear it here, but that's all right. You can type it in in the comments. You can hit like. You can hit love. Just express it any way you want to there. But more than anything, we want to just uh, express our gratitude to God today. And we appreciate our worship team helping us do that through song. Today, as Brian mentioned, it is Palm Sunday. And uh, the story about that in the Bible was found in Luke, the 19th chapter, beginning at verse 28. And I want to call your attention to that story today. I want to share with you a few things today from that story. At this point in the life of Christ, this is uh, when he is going to Jerusalem and he's coming honestly to the close of his ministry, to the close of his life, if you will, in this world. He's about to fulfill in just one more week, in seven days, he's going to fulfill what he was sent here to do. And as he's going into Jerusalem, as he gets to this time in his life, he has sent his disciples already ahead of him, and he said, you're going to find this colt tied at a certain place, and I I want you to to get this this donkey and and bring him to me. And uh, as you go to get him, when you find him there, if when you're getting him, If the owner says, hey, what are you doing? Just simply say, the Lord has need of him. So the disciples do just as Jesus said, and they find uh, this young donkey tied there, and they do loose him, and the owner comes out and says, hey, what are you doing? And they give the simple instruction or the information that Jesus said, uh, well, the Lord has need of him. And the guy evidently was just cool with that and said, okay, I'll gladly let the Lord borrow my donkey. And there's a whole message in that that I'm not going to get into right now, but the short version is this. Whatever you've got that the Lord needs, I hope you will let him use it. He is worthy of using anything we have. Amen. But as Jesus comes riding into Jerusalem that day, on this particular day in the life of Christ, and this is perhaps the only day, uh, I believe it's the only one recorded in Scripture, where the masses were singing praises to his name. He comes riding in on a donkey, and the people of Jerusalem are crying out, Hosanna to the King. They believed Jesus was going to come. Honestly, what they believed is that Jesus was going to come in and kick out the Roman authorities and set up an earthly kingdom. And they were shouting out to their king, and they were shouting out praises to his name. They were honoring him in a way that, wor- that Jesus is truly worthy to be honored. And on this particular day, the Pharisees saw all this going on, and one of them looked at Jesus and said, Hey, you need to shut your disciples up. You need to tell them to be quiet. And Jesus' reply to them is this, If these hold their peace, the very rocks, will cry out. My friends, I want you to understand something. Jesus is worthy of our worship today. And on this particular day, nearly 2,000, some 2,000 years ago, the people of his day actually honored him in a way that he was worthy of. The only other time in the New Testament that I saw that happen, or the only other time in the Gospels, rather, in the life of Christ that I saw that happen, that I read about that happening, is at his birth, and it's the angels who are singing his praise. But as he rides into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, the people are giving honor to his name. And again, as uh, the Pharisees try to tell him to tell those people to be quiet, he makes this simple statement, if these hold their peace, the very rocks would cry out. If we don't worship God, is what Jesus is saying, if the people do not worship him, the creation itself will worship him. I want you to understand today, my friends, Jesus Christ is indeed worthy of our worship. Uh, If you go and read in the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, that particular book is written by a guy named John who was given a vision of the heavenlies and what's happening up there right now. And you get into Revelation chapter 5 and you find towards the end of that chapter that John is able to see that the people who are there and the 24 elders and the various other ones and and all of creation itself 
is giving glory to God and shouting out, Worthy is the Lamb. And they're bowing their faces before Jesus because He is King. And He's worthy of our worship. Now that being said, while Jesus is worthy of our worship, Jesus also never forces anybody to worship Him. If we're going to worship Jesus, we must do so because we genuinely recognize that He is King of kings and Lord of lords. And we must make that admission of our own heart and mind, willingly. Jesus does not force us to worship Him. He is worthy of our worship, but He forces no one to do so. On Palm Sunday, some 2,000 years ago, the people shouted praises to His name. And they, they gave us an example, if you will, in that moment of how Jesus should be worshipped. Now please hear me today. I believe with all of my heart that Jesus is not only worthy of our worship, but He wants us to worship Him. And I believe there are some misconceptions out there. At least there are some things that I had misconceptions about. And I've been learning how to truly worship God for decades now. I'm not perfect at it. I'm, I'm trying to progress in it. But I want to share with you five things that I've come to understand about worship. Let me give them to you real quick. The first one is this. I have found out that I can worship or I can worry. But I can't do both at the same time. I can worship or I can worry. We've got a lot to be worried about right now, don't we? Man, there, there's just all kinds of crazy things going on. Um, there's a lot to be concerned about. And, and I want you to hear me clearly. I am not unaware of that. And I'm trying really, really hard to not just worry myself to death about all these things that I can't control. And, and, and I know beyond the shadow of any doubt that there are real circumstances that are growing right now that's affecting each and every one of us in this community, in this county, in this state, in this nation, in this world. There are some things that are worthy of our concern right now. But hear me today. We cannot worry and worship at the same time. We can take uh, care about things that we need to do. I, I'm concerned about the spread of disease right now, just like the rest of the world. I'm taking actions right now to be physically distant. I'm taking measures to go out less and less and make sure when I go to the store that I'm making my trips count. Um, I, I let my list grow to I, I have to absolutely have to get some things. And I, I understand that, that the various stores are making are placing measures on us now to kind of help with the social distancing and to uh, help with uh, limiting the spread of disease. And I think that's good. I'm taking the measures. I, 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 it, everything within me, when I see people, there's everything within me wants to reach out and shake their hand. And, and I'm taking the measures to not do that, to limit the spread, the potential spread of disease. And I've had people look at me really weird because... Uh, I've, I've offended them, and I don't mean to offend anybody in that. I'm just trying to do my part to stop the spread. I am concerned about what's going on. And I found myself at some point in the middle of all this getting beyond just concerned, but getting overburdened with all these different things that are happening. And I made some changes. I told you about them on Wednesday night, but just let me uh, repeat it very quickly. When it comes to the news... I'm limiting how much news that I watch. I want to be informed of the news, but I'm not going to be immersed in it. I'm getting uh, 30 to 45 minutes of it a day to get caught up with where we are right now so that I can know what I need to do and know how to better pray. But when it comes to these concerns that we have, we can take these concerns to God, and we should. But when it comes to worship, We've got to lay those concerns down at least for a moment. And we've got to see God for who He really is. And guys, for me right now, oftentimes we do that when we come to church, amen? And right now it's difficult. Well, we can't do that. And we're getting to do this now. And I hope as we 
did, as the praise team led us in these songs, I hope that you were, set, you were able to set aside your concerns and your worries just for the moment to praise God in song. But I want to offer this to you as well. Don't do this only at times like this, but get out by yourself if you need to. Socially distance if you have to. And get alone with God. I've got a playlist on my, my phone and I put in an earbud and I go for a walk and I'm listening to praise songs and I'm not ignoring what's going on in my world, but I'm focusing on God and not worrying about these other things in the moment so I can simply worship Him. Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 6, hey, don't worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink or what you're going to wear or all these other things. He even went on to say, worrying, no one by worrying has ever added one cubit to their stature. All right. In other words, Jesus is saying worrying about things isn't going to change anything. But he gets down to the end of that chapter and he says this, but instead, seek first the kingdom of God and, and his righteousness, and then what you need will be added to you. In other words, we need to worship. We need to focus on God. We can deal with our concerns appropriately and carry them to Him in prayer and act as we need to to be responsible, especially in times like this. But hear me today. I know I can worship or I can worry, but I can't do both at the same time. Another thing I'm learning about worship is this. I can worship or I can complain but I can't do both at the same time. Now, there are times when complaining is legitimate. There are times when something really is wrong, you've been wrong, something's not correct or right, and you need to go to someone and say, hey, this needs to change. Uh, this was not correct. Maybe uh, you can think of a time before all this happened where you were in a restaurant and they got your order wrong, and, and you had to bring that to their attention. Uh, I get that. I understand there, there are times when complaining should be done. Matter of fact, if you read in the Bible, you'll find out back in the Psalms, David complained to God. Uh, now, a lot of the Psalms are, are uplifting and worshipful and, and joyous, but there are parts of those Psalms as you read through them. David was pouring his heart out to God about what he felt like was injustice, and he complained to God. I get it. There are times to do that, but hear me clearly, it shouldn't be all of the time. Um, I heard the story one time, maybe you know some people like this, I heard a story about a fellow one time who was just, he was just grumpy. It, it didn't matter how good things were, the guy complained no matter what. And um, his neighbor was determined, determined to get the guy to say something really nice. So he, he had this special hunting dog. He said, neighbor, come on, go with me. I want to show you my dog. He, he can hunt really, really well. He can retrieve ducks when I shoot one, and I just want to show you. And the neighbor's like, well, whatever, okay. He was grumpy. Well, they go out on a hunt, and the guy who owns this really cool hunting dog shoots a duck that lands in the middle of the lake, and immediately that dog's sitting there just waiting, and that, that the owner of the dog gives him the command and the dog runs out on the lake, walking on top of the water, running on top of the water, retrieves the duck and comes back and lays it at his master's feet. Barely had water on his paws, going all the way out to the middle of that lake and back. The owner of the dog looked at the man who complains all the time and he said, What'd you think of that? The man looked down at that dog and said, Huh, poor dog can't swim, can he? Folks, there are some people out there you can't please or impress no matter what. They're going to complain no matter what happens. Listen to me. Don't be that person. And understand, you can worship or you can complain, but you can't do both. Another thing I'm finding out about worship is I can worship or I can have a bad attitude, but I can't do both. I don't know about you, but I, I know I've been guilty of having a bad attitude from time to time. I try really hard not to, but sometimes it just kind of seeps in or s sneaks in on me, and before I know it, there I am. 
And there are times like that where I have prayed and offered myself up to God with that bad attitude. But I know this, i got to get my attitude adjusted before I can really worship God the way I'm supposed to. Uh, I'm trying to be more like this kid I heard about who uh, in the middle of all of his isolation and quarantine and social distancing, he went out with his bat and his ball and he decided that he was going to entertain himself for a little bit and get away from the screen time and that kind of thing. He's out in the yard enjoying the good weather and he takes his ball and he throws it up and he swings and he, he misses. And he gets ready to, to hit, uh, try again, and he makes this declaration. I am the greatest hitter in the world. He throws the ball up a second time. He swings the bat, and he misses a second time, two strikes. Then he makes another declaration. I am the greatest batter in the world. A third time, he throws the ball up. He swings, and he misses. And then he makes this declaration. I am the greatest pitcher in the world. My friend, that is having a good attitude. Listen to me. I can worship or I can have a bad attitude, but I can't do both. I can worship or I can worry. Uh, I can worship or I can complain. I can worship or I can have a bad attitude. I can worship or I can try to manipulate God. Have you ever tried to manipulate God when you pray? Uh, let me explain what I mean by that. First off, let me clarify something. None of us can manipulate God. None of us can have God bend to our will. If we're going to come to God and truly worship Him and truly be His children, we've got to submit ourselves to His will. But there are times and Maybe you've never wrestled with this, but I know I have. There are some things I've wanted really, really badly. And I've approached God kind of like kids do with their parents sometimes. Or maybe you even do this with your spouse. I don't know. But uh, you know that kids, when they really want something, they'll go clean their room. They'll go in. They'll tell mom, oh, mom, you look really pretty today. Uh, is there any chore I can do? And and then, you know, you kind of perk up and you think, oh, whoa, what's going on? What do you want? Well, spouses do this, right? Wife may look at her husband and say, you're looking really good today. Have you been working out? Maybe a husband looks at a wife and says, I love that haircut. Have you lost weight? And you know something's coming, right? What do you want? Well, we call that flattery, or I like to refer to it as trying to butter somebody up, Right? Well, sometimes when we approach God, it, we're tempted to approach Him with flattery or offer our worship to Him to butter Him up to get our way. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I know the Bible says in Psalm 84, 11, that no good thing will He withhold from those who walk uprightly. I also know the Bible says that we have not because we ask not. And I believe with all of my heart that I am a child of God, and He loves me, and He wants to bless me with great things. And I've asked God for a lot of things that He's blessed me with, and I've asked Him for other things that, for whatever reason, He said no to. But here's what I want you to know beyond the shadow of any doubt, that I'm coming to understand. I can't manipulate God to do my will. If I'm going to worship God, I've got to offer myself completely to Him. I've got to, to simply submit my life completely to Him. I need to accept every good thing that He wants to give me. And if some of those things that come my way have to do with adversity, then I've got to accept that as well. Jesus Christ Himself knelt in the Garden of Gethsemane. And He prayed three distinct times, knowing what was about to happen. He prayed, God, if there's any way that this cup can pass from me. In other words, if there's any way that I can fulfill my mission and not have to go to the cross, please, Father God, please, Abba, Daddy, let there be some other way. Three times he prayed that. But then he said these words, Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. 
when we go to offer ourselves in worship to God, we simply have to submit ourselves completely to Him. We can't butter Him up. We can't flatter Him enough to get Him to change His plan and what He wants. It's settled, and there are things that we must accept. I can't worship God and worry at the same time. Uh, I can worship or I can, pl- I can complain. I can worship or I can have a bad attitude. I can worship or I could futilely try to manipulate God. There's one more that I want to share with you. I can worship or I can be ungrateful. But I can't be both. Folks, gratitude is vital. Um, In the book of Philippians, we've been looking at uh, Philippians chapter 4 on Wednesday nights. And in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, Paul writes these words from prison. Let me remind you. Be anxious for nothing. In other words, don't worry about anything. But instead, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And then... The peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got worries and concerns and burdens. Uh, We've got complaints. Some of us, most of us honestly, wrestle through all this time with having a bad attitude and We may even be guilty of trying to manipulate God through this time. I don't know. But here's what I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. We can't do those things and offer our worship to God at the same time. And one of the ways that we offer our worship to Him is by coming to Him, thanking Him for what He's done. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I get it. There's a whole lot we're doing without now. Uh, I've had conversations with folks who are hurting desperately through this time, and my heart aches for you. I know a couple in Louisiana that's changing their wedding plans because of all this that's going on. There are people who travel that I know, who travel and speak, and their schedules have been completely shut down because of this. There are great concerns. There are great burdens. There are great cares. But we serve a great God. And in the middle of all of this mess, we can choose to worship. We can choose to express our gratitude to Him. And I know I have a choice today. I can choose to worry or I can choose to worship. I can choose to complain or I can choose to worship. I can choose to have a bad attitude or I can choose to worship. I can choose to try to be conniving and manipulative, although it would be futile, or I can choose to worship. I can be ungrateful. I can choose to be ungrateful, or I can choose to worship God. But if I'm going to choose to worship, then I've got to simply do that and set these other things aside. In just a moment, our praise team is going to come and lead us in a closing song. And the way that I want to end this service tonight, or this morning rather, is to simply ask you to join me in choosing to worship God. Will you take this Palm Sunday to lay aside your worries and concerns for just a moment? Will you take this moment, uh, this, this time on Palm Sunday, to lay aside anything that may be negative about your attitude? Will you take these moments to lay aside Uh, any ingratitude and and choose to focus on the things that you have to be grateful for. And most importantly, in these moments, would you choose with me to worship God? Let's sing in song today.